I was convicted of um, possession of child pornography and forcible sodomy and was given a sentence of 45 years. I don't think there's anything that could have been done to stop me from getting online. In a three hour period of time, if I spent online, I would probably talk to 25 children. It would be my goal to find out what type of person it is that they were looking to speak to. So if it was a 13 or 14 year old boy who was interested in speaking to a 13 or 14 year old female, then I would be that female. There are millions of pictures online that you can download and um, send as far as this is who I am. One of my friends had a, ha, lived with his grandparents and his grandfather sexually abused me, uh, threatened to hurt my family and, and that type of thing. So I never even considered telling anyone. I believe I was five when that happened. Um, and then when I, went to my <laughs> when I went to my father's house on the weekends, he would take me to a bar where I was uh, raped by both males and females in the bar. I didn't you know, use any pornography for myself until I got the internet. When you're online, there are pictures and emails sent often. <laughs> Anytime you would go in a chat room, you, know, you get on a list and, and pictures are sent out. And so initially it was heterosexual, mild pornography, and then there comes a point where that is just not, you know, it's not, doesn't satisfy anymore. So um, I started to look at child pornography. The internet takes away most, if not all, inhibitions that, that people have. And, you know, prior to that, I never would have even, never would have even considered um, having any type of interaction with a child. But when you spend so much time online, I don't know how it affects other people, but it made me feel, uh, it, it wore away my inhibitions. There's definitely um, research to indicate that child pornography fuels the desire and fuels the fire in someone who is interested sexually in children to go ahead and act on that. Anything that imprints the mind in an abnormal or perverse way tends to remain a permanent fixture in the brain unless they're treated adequately uh, by the behavioral sciences. We have also noticed with uh, pedophiles that fascinatingly, they themselves as children were commonly abused and hence the problem is perpetrated by that. I believe that a huge um, part of my choices to interact with children is because of the sexual abuse. I would see children as peers instead of as an adult child situation. What I would attempt to do would be to um, find out what their interests are and attempt to relate to their, their interest. And certainly a, a majority of the time that I spoke to children, they would have issues that they would share with me that were personal issues. I absolutely believe that the, the kids who I talked to, especially the ones that I spoke to most frequently, the ones that I interacted with, um, saw me as a friend. I'm certain that they trusted me, I'm certain that they liked me. Typically, I would just start by asking for a regular picture, and then if it got to that level, I would eventually ask for a, a picture of more of a sexual nature. Kids were very, very willing to send pictures of a sexual nature. Um, it did not take a lot of convincing to get that type of picture. They are inundated with sexual images and sexual conversation that allow them to very freely participate in those types of conversations and activities. There was a point where there was just no going back. You know, you get so, it's very much like an addiction, or you get to the point where it just, you know, it drives you. In looking at what happened to me as a child, it was my goal to do everything that I could, I mean, to help children. <laughs> It's so ridiculous sounding, it's so ironic, but that was certainly my goal. I worked at a dance studio that I worked with, you know, 400 kids every week. As I said, I was, you know, I taught in the classroom. Um, I gave to charities that involved children. While I was still in high school, I worked with um, shelters for uh, abused women and children. Being an adult all day, being focused on my career, focused on my family during the day, and then 
letting myself slip into the um, childlike peer on the internet it was very, very difficult um, to separate the two. What the adult person in me was doing to say, no, this cannot happen, no, you cannot do that, um, the internet stripped all of that away, just all of it. And that sounds ridiculous when I'm saying it now, because it sounds like it's the internet's fault, and I don't mean that, but the internet made it seem very, not only possible, but acceptable. And um, so I was very clearly two different people. <laughs> when I was offline and thought about uh, the ramifications of the consequences, then it was an issue. But the moment that I got online made absolutely no difference um, because I think the compulsion was far stronger than any reluctance that I would have had about, you know, being caught. It was far more about um, indulging, you know, the urge when I was online than it was about um, being scared that the police were going to, you know, bust in. I have treated uh, pedophiles in my practice and it's extremely difficult to treat. Every act of perpetration that takes place increases their habit until they become uh, a uh, permanent pedophile. There was no chance for me. There was nowhere for me to go. I did not feel that there was anyone that could help me at that time without taking away everything that I had in life. My marriage was wonderful. <laughs> My wife was very supportive. Um, we had a great friendship, uh, great trust. Now, we had only been married for a year and a half when, um, when I was in court, when I was arrested. I did have both an online and offline relationship with a student who I had taught um, prior to having any interaction with him outside of the classroom. There was no other interaction. Um, however, I became close to his family. As far as his parents, they had actually um, invited me to their house several times. We'd go to ball games or and we would either go to the circus or various things like that. And it was when that uh, private time, that alone time, um, was so prevalent that the opportunity presented, presented itself. At the time that the the sexual interaction was taking place, I wasn't feeling like that was wrong. I was feeling like it was um, mutual. I was feeling as if, it, you know, I didn't feel like a criminal. I didn't feel like a monster. I was 25. Oh, he was 14. If I had a release date tomorrow, I would not be able to do that without getting what I would consider enough help to assure me that I would not reoffend. I think the series To Catch a Predator highlights the fact that there are thousands and thousands of predators online. I think that it um, accurately depicts the fact that it's an epidemic, that there is a huge number of, of uh, predators um, approaching children every single day. Um, I'm not sure that people actually listen to the person to to the predator when he says, um, "I've tried to stop, I just can't stop," or um, "I didn't want to risk my family." Um, I'd like to see um, what type of uh, services or what type of rehabilitation they're put in to stop the cycle, as opposed to just exposing the cycle. The internet is not the appropriate place for parents to give them their privacy. You know, I don't believe that children have the uh, available resources, the knowledge, the wisdom to be able to prevent, you know, a predator from approaching them. There is a good, healthy amount of fear that the kids need to have because I think they're very trusting. Children who do not have parents that are communicating with them or listening to them or have established a trust relationship with them would be most acceptable to, to that type of contact. The parents need to maintain consistent communication with the child, really whether the child wants it or not. 
Um, and I think a child needs to feel safe in talking to their parent. I have not forgiven myself. <laughs> I would like to be able to do that. Um, I, if someone could tell me that the children that I talk to online would um, never be offenders themselves or were not hurt in any way, I may be able to get to that point, but no, I don't feel like that right now. I made um, some terrible choices. Um, choices that, you know, if I were given the opportunity, I would do everything I could to prevent them um, again.